<clears throat> hey guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the build of the Skymaster XXL Hawk. I believe this is video number four in the series, not including the unboxing. Thanks for, uh, for checking it out and hang tight and we will hop back in to the build of this massive Hawk. All right guys, last video, we finished this tail section right behind me in the center. We got all that done and it is time to move forward with the aircraft. So in this video, first thing we're doing is we are joining this to that. And uh, that means that we're gonna get the tail pipe mounted and figured out as well too, because that needs to happen when these two pieces go together. When that's done, we're gonna be moving on to the wings, which is a huge part of, uh, uh, the build and it's going to be probably the primary focus of this video. So let's dive back in to this Hawk. Give the video one of these, hit that subscribe button if you're not a subscriber. Let's go. All right guys, so step number one with mounting this pipe is going to get be mounting the bell mouth onto the actual pipe. So I like to use rivets just like they've used on the straps here. They've welded them plus used a rivet. And uh, that's what we're gonna be doing on this bell mouth. Now, one of the things I like to do on all my pipes, especially with ones that are getting a smoke system, is make sure you put the seam on the top of the aircraft. If, if you put the seam on the bottom and you have smoke dripping out, which will generally always happen, that will work its way through the seam and it'll drop into your, uh, into your aircraft. So that's a nice way to prevent that from happening. So what we're gonna do is, first of all, make sure the bell mouth is pushed all the way in and you need to have three rivets at least. So one, two, three. If you put two on there, so one on each side, the bell mouth will pivot. But as soon as you add three, you're good and it's not gonna go anywhere. So we'll do that and get them riveted. All right, so we got the fuselage kind of uh, almost bolted together. All that's holding it right now is the top bolt right here. There's uh, one bolt that goes through and then the four carbon rods. We haven't done the carbon rods up yet just in case we have to split it. But uh, we're just working on engine and pipe mounting. So uh, I'll kind of go through my system here. Now, of course, every plane's different, but uh, this one, we've got the pipe maybe sticking out of the back here by about uh, five millimeters, which is kind of the, the norm uh, from pictures and stuff that I've seen. So that's the, the rear section. And then what we've done here is just have the pipe sitting sideways. These tabs are just kind of holding it in place temporarily right now. And then what I've done is, so what I've done is just put little black marks with Sharpie right there where the uh, front edge of the, of the bell mouth is. Now in a scenario like this, um, what you wanna do when you've got a big bell mouth is generally split the difference, okay? So normally, you, the way you would mount a turbine to pipe distance is you would measure from the actual edge of the, the round pipe about 25 to 30 millimeters forward and that's going to be the end of your exhaust cone. But when you're dealing with a big bell mouth like this, you wanna go about halfway. So 50% one way, 50% the other way, and the edge of your exhaust cone is right at that point, which where we're at right now. So we've got the engine positioned, and then I've taken my small Sharpie or thin Sharpie, and I've traced out the uh, engine mount itself. Now, right now, the engine's not sitting down all the way because our bolts are sitting on top of the woodwork. So we have two options here. We could either cut this entire woodwork down or we could make little notches for the engine. We're doing the latter, so we're gonna make little notches and uh, that's where those little uh, engine strap bolts are gonna fit into. And uh, I just wanna leave as much as possible. There's really no rhyme or reason to it. I could have cut them, but uh, we're not, so. And uh, as soon as we do those little notches, the engine will sink down. Now, right now, if you look down that exhaust pipe, our engine is sitting too high. 
Hopefully this will kind of show you. Um, so yeah, it's sitting too high. And as soon as we add those notches for the strap bolts, it's probably gonna sit just perfect. But our final adjustment is gonna be our mounting of the bell mouth to our engine rails. And I'll talk more about that as we do it. So that's kind of the process. Next thing I'm gonna do is just yank that engine out and we're gonna use the Dremel and make a couple notches for our strap bolts. All right, so we've got the turbine kind of temporarily mounted. Uh, the pipe is perfectly positioned right now. And what I've done, if you can see on the front edge of the bell mouth is I've put a little Sharpie mark there and that is the top of the engine plates. So what I need to do now is take the tailpipe out and we know exactly where we need to mount those brackets onto the bell mouth to make that a perfect fit. Now these uh, L brackets do not come with the kit. Uh, these are just spare ones that I had in stock. So if you are building this kit, you will need to come up with a creative way to mount the pipe or find some L brackets like this. So. All right, so our pipe mounting is all done. We're gonna do a couple little things here, like we're gonna change these, uh, these uh, screws out to be a little bit shorter, especially on the bottom one. Put some nuts on them as well too. And uh, we just wanna be able to put one more screw through the bottom of that bracket. And right now that bolt is, uh, is impeding that. So, but otherwise our pipe is, uh, has its location finished. Our engine has its location finished, which is awesome. And we need our customary view down the tailpipe. Yes. And uh, it looks awesome. So now with that stuff done, we can kind of move on to doing the wings and the rest of the wiring in the back end. So the wings themselves, the stuff for the wing comes out right there in between the main wing tube and that back location pin. So on the fuselage, that is this location right here, which is right down in that area. So there's a, there's a former glued in here or, or wood structure, and there's kind of a, a hole in the middle of that wood structure. So that's where we're gonna run all of our stuff for our wing through. So we can't be mounting the turbine and the pipe and everything uh, until that stuff's dealt with. And then also we've got the stuff to deal with from the back end of the aircraft. So we've got our airlines and our light line at the bottom. And then we've got our surface lines up here at the top. Now you can see what I was talking about previously in my, in my last video about the hot section. So this is kind of the, the danger zone right here. Um, you know, if there was, as an example, a strong breeze coming up the tailpipe when the engine started, you could get hot or flame in this area. So this is the area we wanna protect. And that's why I left our connector back here. So it's out of the hot zone. A little bit, uh, you know, more of a pain to deal with when you're, break, when you're separating the, uh, the fuselage, but not impossible at all. And because uh, you got so much access right here. So that's uh, something else we need to deal with as well is running those wires to the front. So we'll, uh, we'll get that harness dealt with as well. And uh, then we'll be able to move on to the wings. All right, so we've got the wiring all run from the back end. So our connector's right back here. We go through our fireproof sheathing and uh, this is nice and clean, just attached to the side of the fuselage with some CA. And then we've got our wire run down to the bottom and we go through a wire loom, uh, the split wire loom stuff that goes through the gear area and our airline and light line also pass through that as well. And you can see the front side here where everything comes through and comes to the front part of the fuselage. So we're now ready to uh, put the pipe and the turbine back in or in for the last time, but we'll just hang off or hold off on that. Uh, we've got all of our stuff here to run for our tray. So no rush on getting that stuff installed before we start on this tray, then we'll put those pieces back in. So guys, with that stuff being done, it is time to move on to the wings. So I'm gonna get one of those wings over here on the workbench and we will get started. All right guys, step number one here, we are pulling some lenses for the wing. So just 
going to mark that one so I know. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. I'm just using, I can't remember the thickness of this stuff, but this is the stuff that I, uh, I made my own vacuum machine with and made some lenses for my diamond. Uh, so what we're doing here is we're basically starting on one side, uh, heating it up, pushing it down with trusty bent screwdriver, and then flip the wing over, roll it around, and just working this little piece by piece. Now this is pretty thick material from memory. I think it might be 04 maybe. Um, I'm just guessing though, but it's, uh, it's quite thick material. Anyways, and that's the, uh, that's the lens. So I did heat this up too much and you can see it pulled off the, uh, the, the fake color there, but we got a, a great pull. The key to doing this is, is really getting in those corners and that gives you your, your shape. Uh, we're not stretching this very much at all, so it's, it's keeping a lot of its thickness. And then the, the protective coating you have to remove from the outside because your, uh, your heat gun that I use, that'll just destroy it. But the inside you wanna keep that protective coating and that helps to keep that separation layer uh, between those two pieces. So left one's done. I will show you the process, the entire process on the right one. Okay guys, so step number one here, we've got our piece of uh, material taped down to the wing. So what we'll do is we'll just heat this side up and we are just looking for it to form itself over the leading edge of the wing. So you kind of have to do this in stages, I find is the best way. Okay, so we've gone like that, and we take trusty, and we mold these corners. Nezzy, it's hot, buddy. So getting this corner in tight is kind of an important step because we're going to have our piece that the uh, the light mounts to or screws to. So you don't need to do all of them at one time. You can just do this in steps. So we'll do this side first. Now this side's cooled off too much, so it is uh, it's solid. So then we'll take our heat gun, focus it over on this area. Probably a good thing to do here would be to have two screwdrivers going. And now our original spot kind of reset itself. So we'll heat that one back up. It's not fully reset, it's got a bit of an indent there, but we wanna just make sure it's very pronounced. And you can probably hear me blowing, but just cooling this off as I mold it. There we go. Okay, so that's one side done. Now what we'll do is we'll flip the wing over or onto its, uh, its other side and we'll uh, heat it up and slowly pull that piece over. I'm just gonna get set up and then I'll, uh, I'll reset the camera here. Okay, so 
the wings just sitting up on its gear and its uh, uh, trailing edge. So what we want to do now is heat this piece and we'll kind of give it a bit of a stretch. Now because the front edge is rounded, I find you kind of want to do one, uh, focus on one end first. Trusty, and work that corner in. My big head's not getting in the way. There, so this side's done. Now what we'll do is we'll heat this edge and do the same thing. Okay, so that edge is done, and then we'll just work our material into the corner. And I might have gone a little bit hot on this because I can uh, I can kind of feel it sticking to the the paint, but I think I was just on the verge there, so I think that'll work out perfect. Here we go guys. So that is pulling a lens. Now as a last step, I just wanna make sure I'm happy with everything, check it all over, uh, because once we cut this, uh, this green piece out, that will uh, <laughs> not be very easy to, uh, to pull another one. So it would be quite a challenge for sure. So it looks like it's cool enough now. I can probably pull it off, pull the tape off the other side. Uh, we'll let it cool down a little bit more. Yeah, she worked out good. So I'm just gonna leave it on there just to, uh, to cool down uh, a bit before I pull it, but uh, that is how you pull a lens from a shape on something. All right, guys, using a pull saw and an X-Acto blade, got the, uh, the right lens out here or the painted piece. And next step to do is take a file and sand this down. Now we want it to be sanded down just flush with where the uh, the bevel starts or the, the angle starts. We're gonna be putting probably an eighth inch piece of ply uh, piece in here, and that's gonna be the backing for our, uh, our lens. It's also gonna be our fastening point for the, uh, the, the clear lens that goes over top. So it's gonna be recessed a little bit here, the thickness of the lens. All right, so just working on the light uh, lens backing here. So all I did was take a piece of eighth inch ply, hold it up here, trace it out, and then it just takes some shaping and uh, work to get this to fit properly. Uh, on the top and the bottom edges here, I put a 10 degree bevel uh, that, and just using my, my disc sander, and that kind of uh, fits with the lens. And then when you get to this section right here, the leading edge section, you have to put a bit of a, of, of a more flat um, bevel on there. I just do that by hand because the lens comes at such a sharp angle. You gotta remember you're following the inside curve of the lens. So that's just the stuff to, uh, to play with and just figure out by hand. So what we'll do is happy with this one, the way it's sitting. And I, I was testing this by holding this in place and then just taking the lens and popping that up on there as well too. And uh, you can check the fit 
with that. And uh, so this fits good. What we're gonna do is we're gonna glue this piece into place uh, now that I'm happy with it. And then we will hold our other piece up on the vertical or the, the leading edge section. And uh, we'll trace that out and get that one shaped. All right, so we got both of the backings installed and uh, looks good, happy with it. I did some extra sanding here with the Dremel just carefully. And uh, I think we're good with, with everything right there. So did a little cutting on the lens initially, kind of brought it close to the right area. And uh, you can see the Sharpie marks there. So what we'll do now is we'll do some final fitting and sanding and all that type of stuff just to get this fit really well. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna dye the lenses green and red. And uh, so that'll come a little bit later, but that is the wing lenses. All right, so here's a shot of the first one that is done already. So lined the backing plate with duct tape or flight metal and uh, installed the light itself. And so this is the green one and just use CA to install the light, some thick CA around the perimeter and just tried to bury that as much as possible. I did fire this up to test it and it looks absolutely beautiful and exactly what I was hoping to happen, have some of that light reflect off this back plate is exactly what happens. So there's the lens installed and uh, everything worked out awesome with it. So. All right, so we've got the left wing done now. Uh, one thing that I forgot to install on the first one was the, the reflector or lens piece. So we put it on this one. The benefit of using this lens is it's got all these little vertical strips here that uh, when the light, the LED shines up, it goes on this vertical strip. So it almost acts like fiber optics where that light's coming from the bottom, but we'll actually see that light come out on that surface. So good idea to put those guys on. We're gonna install that on the other side. So our lights are done at this point. Uh, we've just run the, the line to the aileron uh, servo horn location and uh, we'll dye those lenses and then we'll get those lenses installed, but that's a big step done on the wing. All right, guys, wings are on this table here. I don't generally do two wings at the same time, but because we uh, are making such good progress on this plane, we will do both wings at the same time. Now, there's a whole lot of things to think about when you're dealing with these wings. Uh, first of all, your, and this is mentioned in the, uh, in the manual, but your straight line for your servo arm on the servo, on the aileron servo, is not perfectly perpendicular to the hinge point. Now they talk about that and uh, it's fine. It just, it's just stuff that needs to be dealt with. So if you look at the surface itself, uh, the panel lines here, I'll try and show you in the reflection, but you can see the little indent in the panel line. So what that tells me on a SkyMaster kit is they probably have wood in this area. And if you squeeze the surface beside that, marked out area, it's flexi, in this area is solid. So we've got wood in this entire area to put our horn into. We also have fairing pieces that cover the aileron output shaft in this system. So we have to deal with that. So that's one of the important things to think about. So a couple important things when you're dealing with these ailerons, number one, your aileron can't go past that marked line because when you get your 30 millimeters of travel, you need to be able to actually get that 30 millimeters of travel. Now, if you put this closer to your hinge line, then you're gonna to have to create an indent in your wing. But uh, that's probably why this is there. The other thing to think about is your actual horn length. Now your horns, when you put these on, you can see that they're too tall for this piece of the fairing that's gonna be covering them. So what we need to do, it's a lot easier to match these now, is drill these guys out to an appropriate height now versus when they're in the wing. When they're in the wing, you're just gonna be guessing. Right now we can pair these two up, put them in the drill press, drill them at the same height, and we'll know they'll, they'll match very, very closely. So those are some of the things to think about with the aileron. We're gonna tackle the ailerons first. And uh, so step number one for me is we're gonna get the aileron servos set up and mounted to our aluminum L brackets and get them ready to install. Uh, after that, we're gonna start running our lines and uh, then we'll kind of move into all the mechanics of everything.
All right, so I'm just gonna go through some of my thoughts here for hooking up this aileron servo. So this is our aileron one, which is our left aileron servo. We're using the X6 output shafts via the hubs with the heavy duty carbon horns for this aircraft. Same stuff that we used on the tail section. So we found the best situated uh, 90 degree angle here. Uh, installed our horn with just one bolt so we could play around with it. Now some of the things you're thinking about is, it says in the manual the output shaft goes closest to the surface, which is fine. Um, if we were to use the closest hole in the servo horn, which is right there, uh, at full deflection, it's probably going to hit the top surface of the wing. If we use this middle output shaft, uh, we've got plenty of distance, but then the problem is we probably end up hitting the fairing that goes over top because it sits about there on the fairing. So you can see my white mark right there. That is where we're going to drill our surface hole. And with that white mark, we won't be hitting or contacting the surface of the wing. Now, because this stuff all happens on an angle, uh, Skymaster did give us clevises to set this wing up with. Now, it's definitely not going to work on the aileron because we don't have uh, straight lines on the aileron. So we'll have to end up using ball joints, which should be fine because we've got lots of clearance with our fairing covers. So that is what we're doing. Um, we're going to take these servo horns off and we'll pair another one up behind it and we're going to put a matching pair of holes in these horns. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drill them uh, the right size for a clevis and uh, just in case and then we can always upsize them when we get the mechanics of the system all put in. Alright so we've got the aileron uh, areas all sanded out. Pretty common on these Skymaster aircraft to have to sand a couple millimeters off each side to fit your aileron in, which is uh, completely normal. Uh, the other thing that I do is trim off a little bit of the excess uh, uh, material, the overhang here as well, um, just to make it fit better. So if you're building a, a Skymaster aircraft, very, very normal. So we've got our, uh, our holes done. The other thing I did was when we got the servos installed like this, take our fairing piece, install it, and take a look down the tunnel there. And we should be good for length on our new hole, the further out one, but I think we'll actually be okay as far as movement goes with the existing hole. So the, the next one in there as well should be fine with that amount of ser servo movement. We should be uh, just, just fine, but we got options now and both will work and they won't interfere with the fairing. So next thing to do is before we start installing the aileron servo, we need to get our leads run back to the root of the wing. Now we're running those leads to this area right here. So we're gonna have to make an opening in the wing and that's where we'll keep our excess is in the wing, uh, not in the fuselage. So we'll make sure we open up this area. There's probably a matching uh, hole in the woodwork to the same thing that shows on the fuselage. That's generally how they do things. So we'll dremel this area out and uh, then we'll get our lines run for the light and for the aileron servo. All right, so the process here of doing a Skymaster wing, uh, we get the servo mounted, take a straight edge, run it across the servo arm, and with tape down here, you draw a straight line. That gives you your control horn point on the actual surface. Now, because we're using, gonna be using ball joint, ball joint, uh, there's zero offset here, so this surface lines up with this surface. Uh, if we are using a clevis, and we had actually proper geometry here, we would do the same thing. So we've got our control horn location. We've dremeled that out. And uh, now we're gonna tape around this. And then we will uh, glue our control horns in with high saw. And uh, what I do there is mix up some high saw, fill the pocket, 
uh, stick the control horn in there, uh, make it nice and pretty around the control horn, peel the tape off and let it cure. All right, so we are continuing on with the wings. It is the next day and uh, I'll just talk a little bit about uh, how we got things set up here. So our aileron horn is all glued in place now and all done. That worked out perfectly and uh, yeah, no, uh, no issues with that. That's all ready to go, ready to set up all that type of stuff. So you can see we kept the horn back here like I talked about. So we get our, our required amount of travel without putting a notch or anything into the, uh, into the wing. So that's good. The flaps on these aircraft take quite a while to get set up. Uh, when you're dealing with something like this aircraft, you've got two levels of flaps here. So there's this additional piece there which never really fully comes out, but uh, it does come out visually from the, the top of the wing about halfway at full flap deflection. So full flap deflection on this aircraft is about 45 degrees. And actually that's, it's actually too much um, at 45 degrees. So the travel here is 30 millimeters, which is probably closer to 40 degrees. So something like that. Anyways, um, so, on this flap here, I've got my horn all set up. Okay, so that's done. I had to grind down the carbon horn to make it a little bit more narrow so it didn't interfere with the clevis. We've got our linkage kind of prematurely set up there and uh, just been playing with angles and stuff. So when the servo sits in here, we've got our hole in the end of the wing for the arm to actually come through. And the last thing I'm working on here is the location of the flap horn itself. Now generally uh, the F-18s that I've put together are quite simple because I've got a uh, predetermined uh, measurement already done. This one's a little bit challenging because we have to get it out a little bit further, closer to this first section of flaps. And uh, we're also gonna have to sand down a notch in this flaps. Now that's kind of covered in the manual but the manual shows a, a few kind of crappy pictures, a bad picture here. So, you know, not a great, uh, great layout, but I'm figuring this out and getting the geometry set up as best as I can. Once I glue one of them in, then we will match the other one to, uh, to, to the first one. All right, bit of an update here. The horns for the flaps have been glued in. Those were glued a couple hours ago. We're just waiting for them to get set. And the aileron um, cover here is, is mounted. I've got the control rods for the ailerons all done now, but uh, I don't want to get these hooked up until we can actually power up the servo and have the flap installed so we can have our neutral position for our aileron. This follows the line of the flap and then we'll be able to get this adjusted. And once all that's done, then we can put our covers on, but uh, can't install these until we get that stuff done. So our flaps are basically ready to go in. We're just waiting for the actual flap surface itself to be ready to go. And uh, what I'm gonna do here is get our lines run to the base or the root of the wing, and then we'll get our, uh, our connectors done up for the plug in there. And uh, benefit of doing that is then we can actually power up the servo. Right now we can't power up the servo because they're just servo leads. So I'm gonna get the, uh, the flap one run and then that's all the electrical for the wings. So we'll get uh, the ash lock connectors put on there. Because we've got uh, three, three and two, we're gonna use a nine pin connector and uh, that'll make things pretty straightforward. All right guys, some more progress on the wing here. So we've got the flap servo kind of sitting there on both wings and the lead has been run to the root of the wing. Now we've done our connectors here. We've got aileron flap and our light connector keeping the same pattern as normal. So a little piece of uh, snakeskin on here, shrink tubing, and that's the, the one connection for the power on the wing. On this other wing here, I have run the airlines to the location where all the connections are gonna be made. Now the, really the only direct path to this location is under or over the main wing tube. So I've gone underneath, which is, looks like it's the top side, but this is the underside of the wing. So we've gone underneath the wing tube and we've got our connection points there. 
Now, I, I've seen a post earlier this week where somebody couldn't get their Skymaster gear to actuate. On the landing gear, there's this little piece right here. This is the locking piece. So if we extend this all the way up, what's gonna happen is the gear is gonna lock in the down position. The reason for that is when you turn your aircraft off and there's no air pressure in the system, they wanna make sure that this gear stays in its lock position. That's not a downside, that's a, a safety feature, it's a good thing. But without air pressure, you can't get the gear to cycle back into the wing. So what I do is you just gotta look at what's happening here. So when the gear is down, our blue line is pressurized, our red is not pressurized. So I hook my compressor up on here, nothing uh, permanent, I just slip this inside the, uh, the air chuck, add air to the blue line and I just pinch it off with a pair of forceps. And then I just put my compressor chuck over top of the red line, start adding pressure to the red line and release the pressure slowly from the blue line and you'll see the gear actuate. So in order for this gear to work, there needs to be pressure on the blue side while pressure gets added to the red side. That's a safety feature. So what I've done here is uh, just put the gear in and had to make a couple small adjustments on the door. So just did a little bit of sanding here so we didn't have any sticking. Previously it was going chunk, chunk and uh, sticking as it was going down. And the other reason I wanted to compress the gear is to make sure I was happy with the path for our black airline. Now I'm gonna put some keepers right here as well to keep that airline from moving in and out of the, uh, the structure. But uh, part of all this was just getting that airline routed so we could get the connections done at the root of the wing. So happy with that. Still waiting on those flaps to cure, but uh, we're almost ready for those. All right, guys, we got the flaps mechanics of it all figured out and sorted out. So there's a shot there for you of what uh, kind of cutouts and positions and stuff that are required for the flap system. So you can see at full flaps, which is what the manual talks about, 45 degrees, which is exactly where we're at. Our servo arm is straight. So we don't want any more flap movement than that. And uh, nothing's bolted down or finished yet, but we've got our, our mechanics and our rods all figured out. So uh, what I also did was there's a, a carbon tube over top of the, the actual rod as well. So that's on there and everything is done. So we've got all of our cleanup and stuff to do, and then we'll start mounting our fairing pieces uh, as well. So now that the flap is done on this side, we're gonna match the other wing to be exactly the same. And then once our flaps are uh, sorted out, then we can do our aileron linkages. And then once everything's done with the aileron linkage, then we can work on to finishing this wing. All right, so our ailerons are now complete. So that is the recommended 30 millimeters of travel. Now, if you watch this, you could probably get away with a clevis. Uh, there's not a ton of bending here, but still it's not the right way to do it. So a ball joint is definitely the better way to do this. Clevises are not good with side to side force and that would just end up creating more, uh, more play in the, in the linkage over time as it wears. So we've got a nice ball joint set up, washers on the end and uh, we're getting our 30 mils of recommended travel. So next thing we're gonna work on is all of our decorative pieces, our fairings and all that kind of stuff. The manual actually covers it quite well. All right, so in the manual it talks about getting the flaps all set up and everything 100%, which makes sense. And then you go on to install the fairing pieces afterwards, because all you need to do is undo with the one bolt and the pieces slip over top. So fairly straightforward. We use 330 seconds plywood, glue those pieces on there, and then use a screw going through, which is, uh, is good. So I'm gonna get those done. If I run into anything interesting, I'll show you guys, but it looks like it should be fairly straightforward. All right, guys, so all of our wood is glued on to the carbon pieces. So that stuff's just curing. Now, an interesting point about uh, the aileron fairings. If you don't do anything to these guys, what happens is you gotta have the fairing spaced out about this much, so when it moves, it contacts. So if you look at the difference here, 
of what I've done. You can see this is the way they come and you can grind out almost um, all of the structure there, all of the extra epoxy. And what that does is that gives it more room so your piece that mounts on the surface can actually fit inside there. And you do have to get rid of a little bit of the height on this guy as well. And I'll try and show you there. So I did sand the bottom edge, but it's a fine line to, uh, to play with because we're using a ball joint here, so you have to be very careful, otherwise you're gonna run out of room and this doesn't have enough room for the ball joint. So just take your time with it. Uh, don't be afraid to sand them because you do really need to sand them to make it work. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna put this surface at the 30 millimeter travel mark, and then we're going to glue the back piece on first. Now the back piece, we wanna make sure that it's not interfering with the actual structure of the wing. And what I've done there too is add a little bit of a, a rounded point or edge on the front. So we get a bit more coverage by the front fairing piece. So we're gonna use shoe goop to goop this guy on and uh, works really well, holds it really well, but if you ever need to get it off, you can, uh, you can pry it off, but it's a lot of work, but uh, a little bit nicer look than, uh, than screws on these pieces. So we're gonna glue that piece down let it set, and then we'll worry about the front after. All right, guys, I'm just uh, working through the last bit of the fairings here. That wing is done, the right wing, left wing is underway. So I'll show you a couple important little tips here. Uh, where we glued the wood pieces on, I've been putting down a piece of tape and putting a mark down. Now the mark is the screw location because the screws, if you just put them into the wood, they're gonna bottom out against the carbon. And if you use thicker wood, there's not enough room for the fairing. So uh, if anything, that's a great reason to have those, uh, those circles in there. So we do the same thing on the back. There's another big circle down at the bottom. Uh, we're holding this on with one screw and also some uh, goop or E6000. So that's what we're using on the back edge and trailing edge as well. And last couple things here is, uh, it's a good practice just to put a drop of oil in between the two carbon plates that rub against each other. Just prevents the carbon from wearing out so quickly. And uh, also use blue Loctite on the, uh, the nylon lock nuts because the bolt, because we, we're limited in room here, you can't have that bolt come through and uh, so it's just barely grabbing the nylon portion of the lock nut. So always good to put some blue Loctite on there as well. So just gonna finish up these fairings and then we will uh, be done the wings other than doing some touch-ups on all the little uh, fasteners. All right guys, in our last snippet for this video, uh, we've got all of the fasteners touched up and I just did our final adjustments on the doors. They were cured enough to be able to do that. So what I do with this, uh, this fairing type stuff is as a last step, I just take a diamond bit and uh, this is like a diamond coated point bit. And the nice thing about using this is you can get in those really small spaces and slowly work it bigger. Now you can do as much of this as possible beforehand. Problem is that you never really fully get the movement out of it when you're actually attaching these things. So I find it always better to do your final adjustments at the end. Now they all don't need it, but there was some that definitely needed it and uh, we've adjusted those. So now there's zero contact between the front and the back piece uh, when the flap extends. So uh, zero resistance now uh, from the fairings, which is perfect. So they're both working awesome. All right guys, and that is everything for this video. Definitely a successful video. Wings, with the exception of the lens cover for the wingtip light, the wings are done, which is awesome. So, uh, big step done in this build. You can see the uh, back and the middle part of the fuselage behind me. I think the next video we're gonna be joining the fuselage, which is super exciting. So, anyways guys, thanks for watching my videos. Um, Thanks for supporting the channel. Don't forget to give the one, video one of these a thumbs up if you liked it. Uh, hit that subscribe button down below if you're not a subscriber and we'll see you in the next video.